Good morning everyone. You're joining me on the top of Leg Charnag in the Cairngorms. So to just give you some sense of where I am, directly in front of us now is the uh, Glenshee ski area, the largest ski area in uh, Scotland. And we're surrounded by various snow-capped mountains, Cairngorm mountains here in uh, Scotland. Stunning location. Lots of snow, probably not quite enough for the skiers, but still plenty of snow for walking and in, enjoying a sort of a mountain, winter mountain day. I'd like to talk to you about uh, what's called the unhappy triad very common skiing injury that occurs where people twist their knee. It can happen when the bindings on your skis fail to come off and the length of the, the ski then acts as a, as a fulcrum to, to twist your knee when you fall over. Now within your knee joint you have various different ligaments and within the unhappy triad you damage three different structures in the same injury. So the medial collateral ligament is a ligament on the side of the knee, on the inside of the knee here, and that prevents what's called a valgus stress on the knee. So that's a stress from, from the outside of the knee here, pushing inwards, and it restrains the knee from buckling in that direction in here. That ligament, when you uh, sustain this kind of injury it comes under that pressure as you twist the knee and that can tear that ligament as you do this injury as you twist your knee like so it puts pressure on the meniscus now the meniscus is a cartilage between the joint acts as a shock absorber and that can be like a gristle if you ever eat chicken there's gristle between the joints and that can get torn within the joint. So that's your second injury, is a meniscus tear. Then within the actual knee joint itself, you have your cruciate ligaments that interlock like so. They prevent the knee from shearing forwards. The anterior cruciate prevents it from shearing forwards and the posterior cruciate prevents it from shearing backwards. And they also, with their interlocking action, prevent the knee from twisting like so. And the other injury that you sustain often with the unhappy triad is, is the anterior cruciate ligament. As it twists and shears, it snaps. This is a, a nasty injury and it can result in requiring surgery. Whilst the medial collateral ligament is quite effective at healing itself, the cruciate and the meniscus is not. They have a very poor blood supply and if you damage those structures, you will often require surgery. I say often because it is possible to build your sense of proprioception and your, your muscles around your joint to a very high standard without those ligaments so that you don't actually need to repair them. So it is possible in some cases with a lot of physiotherapy and intensive exercise to get away without surgery but a lot of people will require surgery for this kind of problem. Within the United Kingdom, they don't do this surgery uh, until the swelling has gone down. On the continent, I've heard of people who've having it within a couple of days of sustaining the injury. So just different ways of doing things. I think one of the reasons in the UK is that we might like to wait and see because we know that some people will get away without having the surgery. But in my experience, the majority of people do tend to proceed to have it. Uh, it's a case of if you want to continue functioning at a high level, continue skiing and hiking and, and being in the mountains, uh, you probably would want the surgery. If you're happy, uh, maybe you're not being up in the mountains anymore or, or you, you have a more sedentary lifestyle, you'll probably get away without surgery. So the surgery involves uh, 
they either take the patella tendon so that's the, the tendon on your knee between the uh, tibial tubercle and the patella here or the hamstring tendon at the back of the knee and they take the tendon and use it to form a a new ligament within the knee they actually drill holes into the to the knee feed the ligament through and, and attach it with screws at the bottom and the bottom of the knee joint the meniscus if there is a tear within it they will nibble away at the tear they have little tweezers to remove the tear uh, that tear can cause locking and giving away within the knee joint and uh, they, they remove that wash the knee out and it's a day surgery like I say you'll, you'll probably be home the same day certainly by the following day depending what day, time of day you have the operation after an anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction intensive physiotherapy it's going to take you six to nine months until you're back hiking on the hills or skiing down the slopes the first week is really just about getting the swelling down and inflammation down that you get associated with surgery so ice you do gentle knee exercises just sliding the leg up and down the bed tightening your thigh muscles getting up on a pair of crutches walking around you'll be home after a day or so and uh, the first week really is fairly light that after a week you normally get a review appointment with your physiotherapist just to check how things are going make sure there's no infection make sure your stitches are all okay after that week uh, you start to build up the exercises however for the first six weeks depending on your surgeon uh, we don't want to overstress that uh, cruciate ligament we need the, the um, uh, blood vessels to innovate and, and not innovate but to vascularize the the tendon and move blood flow into that uh, not tendon sorry into the ligament okay it was a tendon it's, it's now a ligament okay it's been converted function from tendon to ligament so the first six weeks you'll be seeing a physiotherapist they will be getting you things like doing things like uh, step ups uh, squats walking on a treadmill perhaps uh, bridging exercises where you're lying on your back lifting your, your hips up uh, you'd still ice it if you've got any swelling and just generally building things up for that that first six weeks then from six weeks to three months we start progressing things now it will vary a lot from surgeon to surgeon as to what they are comfortable with some surgeons don't want any strain on that anterior cruciate for three months others are more comfortable with you doing a bit more on it okay the problem we've got the reason i talk about strain is we don't want the tendon that has now been placed in your knee to replace the ligament we don't want that to stretch uh, we we want it to be strong and actually it is stronger than the original ligament when it first goes in but during the process of uh, revascularization the the tendon does get weaker and it does at, at a certain point in the process whilst the blood vessels are moving into it become weaker than a uh, th than the original ligament and if you overstretch that then it it will become too loose it won't do its function of restraining that So depending on your surgeon you wouldn't do any jumping or twisting type activities um, some will allow after six weeks uh, pretty much all of them will allow after three months okay so you'll need to check with your your physiotherapist and your surgeon as to what process they would like you to be doing but certainly after three months you, we can start introducing uh, more high impact type activities so by that what I mean are things like jumping uh, jogging building up to hopping type activities that three to six month period is when we start getting you sports specific fitness 
So if you are a football player, for example, then you are doing little shuttle runs, changing direction. If you're a skier, then we would probably be getting you doing more sort of jumping and uh, perhaps doing some ski sits and, and activities more associated with skiing. We, you certainly wouldn't go skiing and you certainly wouldn't be playing football, but we would train you up getting ready for those activities. After six months, six to nine months, that's when you, you return to your activity, that's when you return to your sport, but not before that. <laughs> so I hope you found that useful, just a summary of uh, the unhappy triad. So just as a quick recap, unhappy triad, you tear your collateral ligament of the knee, that's the ligament on the outside of the knee, the meniscus within the knee, and the cruciate ligament. The collateral ligament will generally heal itself, the meniscus and the cruciate won't. Some people have to have surgery uh, if they want to high, function at a higher level or if they can't build themselves up themselves. Other people can get away without those ligaments and that meniscus. When you have the surgery, they take a tendon from your patella tendon or the hamstring tendon. In my experience, it's always been the hamstring tendon, that gets grafted into the knee. The first uh, week zero to week two is really about getting the inflammation down, getting the knee moving and getting yourself walking. From week two up to week uh, six, we're just gradually progressing the exercises. So sliding the leg up and down, no high impact, no running, no jumping, nothing like that. From week six to month three, it will vary from surgeon to surgeon. But a conservative surgeon, so for the sake of this video, still no running, still no jumping up to the three month point. After three months, so from three months to six months, we're talking sports specific training, but no contact. And you're not doing your sport, you're just training for your sport. So. You're not playing football or rugby, you're not going skiing, you're not hiking the mountains. You're just getting ready to do those activities. Um, from month six to nine, you're back into your sports, but graded return to those activities under the guidance of your physiotherapist. So thank you for watching. This is Adam from New Forest Physio Clinic up in a beautiful morning in the Cairngorms. And uh, happy hiking, happy skiing, Happy football, rugby, whatever your sport is, and uh, good luck.